one sort or another. And uh, during the Spanish conquest of the Americas, they were able to obtain great amounts of gold. And they would put this gold on the ship and they would transport it back to Spain. Sometimes the ships would be lost. We do have treasure hunting uh, companies now who have been off the coast of Florida and they have been able to uh, locate some of these Spanish ships that have been wrecked and they've been able to recover some of the treasure from these ships. And they've also found treasure in uh, Peru, uh, around Lima, in the harbor outside of Lima in 50 foot of water and the reason that nobody found it before is that water is very turbid but now with our equipment we are able to find them and one of the tools being used in, in locating treasure are the divining rods that can be used in locating treasure and very often uh, when I go out treasure hunting, I do use uh, these rods in locating uh, treasures that have been lost or, or been uh, buried or secreted away. And very often you'll find that there are a lot of stories about treasures and the treasure has been found many years before and removed. So when you come to the location, there's nothing there. But it's very intriguing to be able to go into the places where the Spanish were located and uh, listen to the stories of lost treasure, especially in the Southwest. The Southwest is abundant in lost treasure stories and they're also uh, abundant in stories of lost mines where the Spanish people did mine for gold and then they uh, left and supposedly covered up the mine. But what few people don't know is when the Spaniards were working in the hills and working their mines, they uh, would mark the canyons with what they call a Spanish trail marker. And when the Spanish government agents would come up there to the area where the gold mine was, they knew how to read the Spanish trail markers in order to find the mine that the Spaniards were working because they wanted to tax them. So all of the gold mines in the Southwest uh, were known and they were marked on maps and the Spaniards uh, would tax the miners. Very often some of the miners would try to hide some of their gold from the Spanish Empire and they would hide it and very often they were not able to go back and recover it. So these treasures are still here. And we find that the Southwest is very abundant in stories uh, left over from the Spanish era. And we also know that the Southwest is uh, a desert region. It is called the Sonoran Desert. And the Sonoran Desert is one of the largest deserts in the world. Uh, this is not a sandy desert, this is a semi-arid desert. And we find that the peoples that inhabited this country were very close to nature. They understood the lines of energy on the surface of the earth. And in Europe they called them ley lines. And the Indian people knew that if they traveled these lines of energy, they would not get tired. And very often, especially uh, in the deserts around Yuma, the Yaqui Indians would travel on these lines of energy for days at a time without getting tired. They also use these ley lines when they traveled between trade centers. One of the trade centers was in uh, Casa Grande, Arizona, and in those days when the Spaniards were here, it was one of their financial centers, much like we have in Chicago. The other financial center was in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and uh, the Spanish gover uh, government had a road that went from Mexico City all the way up to Santa Fe, New Mexico. This trail was 
1,500 miles long, and it was called the Royal Road, El Camino Real. And there were many other roads that were called El Camino Real, but this was the main road that went to Santa Fe, New Mexico. And Santa Fe, New Mexico was the hub of commerce in those days. It was like our Wall Street. And very often, uh, when the Spanish missionaries came up into this country, they would uh, locate at these trade centers because they had uh, things available to them for food. And the, uh, the Indian people in those days, they grew crops along the Rio Grande River and they were able to store some of these crops and trade with these crops. So when the Spaniards came up into this area, principally uh, the, the principal Spaniard that was in the southwest in New Mexico, he was looking for the seven cities of Cibola, which is a myth. He did not realize that the seven cities of the Bola or the Golden Cities were etheric cities. They were not a physical golden cities. And the Spaniards came up here and uh, they took out vast land grants. And what happened is these land grant owners would uh, give sections of land to settlers, much as we did to homestead. The people would camp from Spain would come over and they would homestead on these land grants. And there were seven of these land grants throughout the Southwest, New Mexico and Arizona and California. And it just happened that these land grants were located on a very strong vortex. And we find out that these electromagnetic uh, fields can be mapped with a magnetometer. These magnetic fields, where they had this intense magnetic area, uh, seemed to dominate the uh, culture of that land grant. And very often we'll find that when the missionaries came up in here, they would locate their church close to one of these magnetic vortexes. And uh, very often we find that around these magnetic vortexes there were stories of unusual things happening. And even in modern days times people have seen unusual uh, creatures around these magnetic vortexes. Uh, this is also a place where you see cluster sightings of UFOs and uh, very often people report seeing other phenomena such as spirits and uh, very often these uh, aberrations that the native people would see and they didn't understand them they would of course go to the missionaries for protection and it seems as though the missionaries made uh, quite a b bit of their living giving protection to these Indians giving them herbs and so forth to ward off these evil spirits. They also had uh, places where they had miraculous healings that takes place. And north of Santa Fe, there was a town called Chimayo. And in Chimayo was one of these very high intense magnetic areas. And, this, and the missionaries did build a church right in the center of this high magnetic area. And part of the church, in the back of the church, there was a deep hole there. And in this deep hole was dirt. And many, many people came to this church in order to obtain some of this dirt that was in the hole because uh, they attributed many healings to taking the dirt and placing it on their body where they had sores and they were healed. And even though they took dirt out of the hole and took dirt out of the hole, the hole always contained dirt. It, it, the dirt, they never used up all the dirt. And today you can go there and see the dirt and uh, 
for a little offering donated to the church, they'll give you a small bag of this miracle dirt that's in there. That's one of the interesting things 